In this video I want to give you a couple of ideas and tips on black and white in Luminar. Black and white was the origin of photography and over a hundred years later it is still one of the purest forms in which to display an image. I especially like to work in black and white for my travel portraits. So let's work on this one here. Now the first thing I will do is crop it a little bit because I don't like how it is centered too much right now. Now I could have done this in camera, but I often give people that I photograph while traveling a print. And I have noticed that they prefer their images not to be cropped as tight as I like. So that's why sometimes I will crop less drastically during capture. So now I'll click on the icon with the pencil and the ruler and I will choose the crop and rotate tool. I'll switch to a 4x5 aspect ratio and I'll simply take the image in a little bit by dragging the top right corner towards the bottom left. Then I will take up the bottom left corner and also bring it in a little bit. And as you can see, I'm actually cropping in the turban because I think it makes for a stronger close-up portrait. Also, note how I put one of the intersections almost over the eye that is closest to the camera. Now I'll hit done to apply this crop for now and of course I can always revisit it later. Luminar comes with a couple of black and white looks that are scattered around the different preset folders. But for this one we'll start from scratch. I'll select the black and white conversion tool found in the essentials tool tab and click on convert to black and white. Let me just quickly explain what the difference between luminance and saturation is. The saturation tab allows you to do selective coloring. For example, if I bring up the saturation of the blue channel, I will allow those specific colors back into the image. But I'm more after classical black and white, so I will undo this by hitting Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows, or I could also just double click on the blue slider. Black and white conversion is all about contrast. First of all, there's the global contrast, which we'll get to in a second. That's the contrast between the highlights and the shadows in your image. But almost as importantly in black and white, there's the color contrast. As you can see here, the blue of the jacket and the orange of the scarf were translated into a darker gray and a lighter gray respectively. But the gray scale of the jacket and the gray scale of his face are still relatively similar. A good black and white conversion will pull these further apart in order to better guide the eye of the viewer. Now, I could either decide to bring the blue channel up and make it a brighter gray, but then I would have too much bright at the bottom of my image, and I don't want that because that might lead the viewer's eye out of the frame. So instead, I'll drag the blue slider down as to darken the grayscale rendition of the jacket. Now it contrasts even better with the gray of the scarf and the face. Speaking of those, I want to brighten them up slightly, so I'll experiment with the red and yellow sliders as orange is a mix of those two. Now I'll switch to the light panel and increase the global contrast a little with the smart contrast slider. This will darken the jacket even more and slightly brighten the beard. Now, Let's tweak the details a little by using the Details Enhancer. As a finishing touch, I will add a vignette to draw the viewer's attention even more to the center. In general, I like to set my feather to the maximum value because that way I can apply a heavier vignette without it being noticed so much. Another cool feature about the vignette in Luminar is that at the same time you can also lighten the interior of the vignette's area. In other words, you can brighten your subject and darken the surroundings all in one go. Now, I think a value of about 20 looks really nice here. Let's click on the history icon and compare this to our initial black and white conversion. We've sure come a long way, haven't we? I think this black and white style will serve me on other images as well, so I'm going to turn it into a luminar look. I've got my looks panel still open, so all I have to do is click on save new look and give it a name. How about contrasty black and white portrait? 
Now, let's pick another image and apply that look to it. Works pretty well, doesn't it? Note how the crop of the first image we based the look on didn't get applied to the second image. That's because crops aren't recorded when you create the look, which makes sense because crops are very image specific. The beauty of looks is not only that they save you time, but they can also make images that you shot at different moments in time look more similar as they belong together. For example, if you want to display them side by side or put them in a photo album. By the way, another great feature of Luminar looks is that you can fade them. When you do this with a black and white look, you get an interesting mixture between your original color photo and the black and white version. However, for this particular image, I prefer the all black and white version, so I'll leave the slider at its maximum value. That's it for this tutorial on black and white in Luminar and how to create a black and white look. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later.